we have a uh, deadline at six o'clock and that's just 10 minutes. So if we can quickly, yes, that gentleman, fire away. Uh, Taj, uh, many thanks for that. Are you aware that on the 5th of November last year, the Lord Chief Justice announced at a press conference that the judiciary would just, in this country this is, the judiciary would in the very near future then issue a practice direction on the wearing of face coverings in court. And here we are nearly a year later and we're still waiting for it. And do you know why that is? I'll tell you. It's because government ministers have lent on the judiciary to stay stum because they're frightened of upsetting the Muslim community in this country. And for far too long that's gone on. Will, uh... yeah. um, multiculturalism uh, is what I want to talk about. Uh, I see multiculturalism as a individual thing. So it is something that one would individually take on board. Like I've taken on board wine and bacon sandwiches and I love my curries, for example. But, you know, that's me taking on different cultures uh, rather than a collection of monocultures. My question is, is, is this the political multiculturalism? Is it a reaction to not wanting these other, these other peoples uh, polluting the, the, the sort of British values? Is, is that what's causing the political multiculturalism? Thanks. Okay, well, uh, the, the lady back there, you, you had your hand um, in the purple jumper. And then I think you this were question, next, weren't This you? question is for um, Kenan and um, Elham, which is just um, whether you could comment on the increasing kind of conservative atmosphere in academia where, the, where it's um, been influenced by the neoliberal project to promote individual identities relentlessly so that, say, Marxist studies have been replaced by cultural studies, women's studies, by gender studies, and people's um, individual sort of beefs or individual um, identities are promoted relentlessly at the expense of organizing or class analysis or being able to have solidarity with other people. It seems like a really worrying thing, and a comment about that. Thank you. And uh, here, uh, I think you had your hand up. And, and then after this one, we'll, we'll take answers, and if this time, we'll come back. So fire away. Um, I was just wanted to ask Taj about um, his idea that banning the face covering is a sort of fight against Wahhabism. And does he think that maybe there's a risk that if you ban something and you have very reactionary right-wing religious forces, that um, you're only inciting sort of more polarization and more hatred from those people that you're supposedly trying to resist. Okay, so uh, Taj, if you could reply to questions addressed to you. Uh, I think Kenan, there was one for you. Yeah, I, I, th I find it quite um, instructive uh, that uh, uh, both people, to the question directed me, to keep using the word face covering. It's the face mask. Don't shy from it. Please use it, because that's what it is. It's a mask. It, uh, it, co it conceals identity. We shouldn't be afraid and sh shouldn't be so PC about it. This notion that somehow if, if Britain bans it, there'll be right on the street of Luton or, 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 or Leeds or whatever. This is something that you, we've been programmed into thinking it might happen. Had it happened in France? No. Had it happened in Belgium? No. The, the point is, you know, immigrants like myself here, you know, I came here many years ago to study, but I think what the mistake that Western governments did here, like the, if I want to join the Oxford Golf Club, there's two things I need to do. Firstly, I would have to pay the money, and secondly, I would have to sign and uh, agree to the rules of this club. Now, what immigrants should, should have been done, asked to do when they came originally in the 50s and 60s, whatever, two things. Ah, you will come on to Libya, no problem, learn the language, learn the lingo, and become integrated. And th this wasn't a requirement. And I think now the chickens are coming home to roost, and now suddenly we want to get all excited and say, well, what about their rights? They, th there's a greater right here that they bring these Saudi customs here and p projecting it as Islamic, and no one wants to say boo to them because we're afraid of them. We should be stop worrying about Saudi petrodollars. You know, it is, it's not something that, uh, that should concern us. And what's more important is that what's good for this country, not what's good for Saudi Arabia. Okay, thank you. Okay, can I George ask the question, answer the question on multiculturalism? Um, I wasn't sure exactly the point your, your question you were asking, but the point about the roots of multiculturalism, politically the roots of multiculturalism, um, certainly in Britain, 
is that um, multiculturalism derives from the attempt by the state at local and national level to deal with the anger created by racism in the 70s and 80s, anger that spilled out into the riots of the late 80s, um, uh, late 70s, early 80s. And the response of the state at both local and national level was, rather than address the question of equality directly, is to pretend that Britain um, was a society of societies or a community of communities and, and, to deal, and to draw minorities into the political process through the supposed communities to which they belong um, and through creating a set of uh, community leaders who uh, supposedly spoke for them. Finally, on, on just on this question about the cultural turn, there has been a cultural turn much more broadly where we, we no longer talk in terms of um, class differences or, or the importance of class, but talk much more of the, of, of, of the issue of culture. And so even class has become a cultural issue. So, you know, the white working class is seen as a, a cultural uh, issue, not, not, not as a class issue. The problems of the white working class, um, uh, which, which is a problematic term in itself, is seen as a, as a cultural pr issue problem, not as a, a, a class problem. And I, th I think that cultural turn has been a major issue, yeah. major problem. Thanks. Uh, okay, so there was a question for you and Chris, if you fire away. Thank you. Um, just to add to what you said, Kenan, about uh, uh, multiculturalism, within a German-Swiss uh, context, uh, one, one also has uh, to use the term of uh, the politics of indifference. One, the expectation was that migrants who will come to these countries will not stay. So it was okay, more or less, to set certain kind of policy and separate. It's just like, uh, they can do whatever they want, they'll go back anywhere, but they didn't go anywhere. They stayed there. So uh, in, a, in, a, in a way, one realizes that uh, th there are several factors that contributed to the situation that we are living today. When it comes to your question, it's just, uh, I'm actually having problems to find finance for my PhD candidates. Um, the, the Turkish candidate that I, that I just mentioned in the morning, she has an, an excellent research design and wouldn't be financed also as a reaction to what I, I think is, is this paradigm that is so dominant in these committees that hold the strings to money and more or less they say and it's like why should you focus on this Islamist uh, party. Another PhD candidate came to me from England because she couldn't find a supervisor here because of the political correctness that seems to really dominating the academic atmosphere asm here in, in Britain. There is a big problem here, as I said, and, and I hope that in cooperating together we could overcome that in order not to stay in the minority. Well, I can echo that. I've had personal experience of that as well. But we have reached uh, close of play now, six o'clock. It it's like a cricket match. <laughs> so the, the umpire has now called time. So we, uh, is there a break now?